Tom and Mike are seen stalking the enemy in a desert, it is known that Tom is on a mission to find and kill a terrorist leader named Saeed Asif. After a long wait the enemy began to appear. But when he was about to shoot the enemy, Mike hesitated and as a result got them caught making his mission failed. Luckily they managed to hide and escape from the pursuit of Syed's men, but another disaster came where this time they had to face a sandstorm that was so terrible, they asked the headquarters to immediately pick up, but unfortunately Mike and Tom's location was so dangerous that the base couldn't pick up, then headquarters asked Mike and Tom to walk to a village called Umuri which is located west of Mike and Tom's current location. After the sandstorm passed, Mike and Tom started their long journey to Umuri village. Even though it's been more than three hours walking, they still haven't arrived at Umuri village, even so Mike doesn't just give up and continues his journey, until finally they find a sign or symbol of danger that makes Mike realize, that where they are now, is a minefield where there are 33 million active mines, but Tom casually says that it's not true because maybe the danger sign or symbol is the enemy's strategy to scare Mike and Tom so they don't want to go to Umuri village. I know which option I'm taking. In the end Mike and Tom went back on their way, because if they were in the right direction, it was only an hour away they could reach the village of Amuri, but unexpectedly something terrible happened. Maybe. Tom unknowingly stepped on a mine and unfortunately the mine exploded so that Tom was seriously injured with both his legs crushed, the situation got worse when Mike was about to help Tom, he stepped on the mine too and it made him unable to move anywhere. Feeling hopeless, Tom ultimately chose to commit suicide by shooting a gun at his own head. Mike tried to stay calm and started looking for a way to pick up the radio communication that was near Tom's body. After trying several times Mike finally managed to take the radio communication, but unfortunately because the battery ran out, while the spare battery was in Tom's shirt pocket, Mike used another method and was forced to use a solar-powered battery charger. After waiting for several hours, the radio communication battery was finally full and Mike immediately contacted the headquarters to inform them of the condition and ask for help. Mayday, Mayday, Alpha Margo 4 to Hogzen, do you copy? Base camp here. We've been looking for you for hours, Alpha Margo. Sir, I'm requesting immediate support. Over. Affirmative, Alpha Margo. Your situation is... But Mike's efforts turned out to be in vain because the headquarters could not send helicopters for reasons of security and unpredictable natural conditions at Mike's location. Then Mike was advised to wait for other American soldiers who were involved in a truce near the border. The soldiers will arrive at Mike's location within 52 hours, with a note, if they can win the truce there. Not long after that a big sandstorm came, so that Mike had to survive. With all his might, Mike finally managed to survive the sandstorm, but another problem arose when the radio that he had worked so hard to take from Tom, now the radio had to be carried away by the storm, so the communication radio was now far from Mike. Hours passed, and now Mike's condition was really in danger, even to quench his thirst, he was forced to drink his own urine so that this situation made Mike really desperate and decided to commit suicide because he felt he was not strong to get through all of this. But at that time, suddenly a man who seemed to be an Amuri villager appeared, then Mike immediately asked the man for help to fill his water bottle and also get his radio communication. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But the man was reluctant to get Mike's radio communication, arguing that the radio communication would not be useful. Where are you going? 
You got it, asshole? You need to keep moving on. It's a simple job. After waiting for some time, finally the son of the man came and brought Mike's bottle which was already filled with water. Very, very grateful. Mike then asked the boy to help him get his radio communication, but the boy didn't know what Mike was talking about, so this made Mike very upset and scared the boy and left Mike alone. In the following scene, now the day has turned into night, at this moment the bonfire that Mike made suddenly goes out and makes a pack of wolves come. Luckily the wolf didn't attack Mike, but Tom's body was targeted and brought to be eaten by a pack of wolves. In the morning, the stranger from yesterday came back to Mike and asked some ridiculous questions. You say me beba. You very lucky man. You very lucky man, Mike is my cool. Okay. <laughs> Even so Mike tried to be patient. Then he again asked a foreign man to get his communication radio, lucky this time a foreign man wanted to get Mike's radio. Some time has passed, now Mike has run out of food supplies, so Mike is forced to eat a scorpion in order to survive. Mike's condition from time to time declined and his psyche began to be disturbed, he experienced severe hallucinations. Mike hallucinated as if Tom was alive, then suddenly a pack of wolves were already around him and ready to eat him. Miraculously it turns out that Mike managed to kill all the wolves. In the following scene, now there are seven hours left to wait for help from a group of American soldiers, at the same time the headquarters finally contacted Mike again. But Mike has to accept the bad news, because the headquarters has informed that the American troop is truce. Expected to experience a delay of 17 hours on the way to Mike's location. Hearing this, of course, instantly made Mike helpless. Then headquarters also informs Mike, that his fiancée named Jenny, wants to talk to Mike. Jenny. I'm so sorry. After talking to Jenny, he suddenly lost control and almost fainted, but luckily a strange man came back to Mike and immediately grabbed his body, then the stranger gave a medicinal potion to Mike. After drinking the potion, Mike began to experience extraordinary hallucinations and saw all the memories of his dark past, as if they were happening again in front of him. Maybe that might help. Shut up! No! Tom's form reappeared in front of Mike and told him that a group of American soldiers had begun to appear and were heading to Mike's location, instantly he began to wake up from his hallucinations. Then Mike received a call via radio communication and immediately notified his location. However, the American troop was having a hard time finding Mike's current location. Then Mike intended to take the SOS flare to tell his location, but suddenly a shot from Syed's men hit his body, so he quickly grabbed a gun and managed to kill all of Syed's men. After killing Syed's men, Mike saw that the American troop began to move away from his current location, until finally he decided to venture out to take the SOS flare which was right a few steps ahead of him. Mike was desperate to take risks even though the mine he stepped on might explode, but what can I do, because he has no other choice. And it turned out that his choice was right, he managed to walk without causing an explosion, because what he had stepped on all this time turned out to be not a mine but only a can. Feeling safe, Mike turned on the SOS beacon so that the American troop could find and evacuate Mike. At the end of the film, it can be seen that Mike has just arrived at the airport, where he is already waiting for his fiancée, they both finally get back together and miss each other. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Leave a like and turn on notifications it really helps the channel out. See you in the next video.